Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. This whole chapter is going to be about functions. <clears throat> and the first thing we need to do is, is define what a function is. Um, but before we talk about what a function is, you have to know what a relation is. A relation is really just a relationship between two sets of information. And that could be, in this case, points on a graph. Um, and really, you can tie a re you can relate points on a graph in many different ways. Um, <clears throat> but a specific subset of a relation is what's called a function. And um, a function, the um, definition for function is given an x, we get only and exactly one y value. So for each x, there's only one y. For a relation, could be anything. I mean, you could have a whole bunch of different y values for each x value. Um, and really, once you start seeing some examples of these, it'll, it'll make a little more sense. All right, so let's talk about an example. Okay, I'm given a party, and the following people show up. And I've included their heights. So Elise is 5 feet 5 inches, Christie's 5 feet 4 inches, and so on. You can see the list there. And uh, let's say that Asher called uh, the pizza place and said uh, a pizza guy shows up. And he knows that Asher ordered the pizza. And so that means everyone knows who is paying for the pizza. If he asks for Asher, everybody knows who that is, and everything is good. Now let's say instead of Asher giving his name when he called for the pizza, he said, um, ask for the person who's 5 feet 11 inches tall. So when the pizza guy shows up, he says, I'm looking for the guy that's 5 feet 11 inches. Well... It could be Asher, or it also could be Ted, because they both are 5 feet 11 inches. <clears throat> Excuse me, so here it is graphically. So um, this is called mapping, and you may have done mapping before. And let's say that name indicates height. All right, so let's draw um, lines from the name to the height. So Elise is 5 feet 5 inches. Uh, Christy is 5 feet 4 inches. Uh, Asher is 5 feet 11, uh, Chad is 6 feet 0 inches, Ted is also 5 feet 11 inches, and Helen is 5 feet 7 inches. Now, notice in this case that each of these, let's just call them x values and y values, each of these x values only has one line coming from it. Now, <clears throat> There are two lines ending at this y value, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's more than one y. It just means that each x has only one y. Um, so let's go over here to height indicates name. So all I've done here is just switched. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to call this left one x and the right one y. And let's go ahead and draw the lines again. So 5 feet 4 inches, that's Christy. Uh, 5 feet 5 inches is Elise. Um, 5 feet 7 inches, that's Helen. And 5 feet 11 inches, that's either Asher or Ted. Now notice now I have two lines originating from that x value. That is not a function. Um, and then let's finish it off with uh, 6 foot 0, that's Chad. So <clears throat> in this case, height indicates name is not well behaved. It's a relation. Those heights and names are related. Um, it's a relation, but it is not a function because each of those x values does not have only one y values. Now, name indicates height. That's our first example there. That is a well behaved function, uh, relation or a function. It's called a function because each of those x values, um, each of these names has only one line going from it. So each x has one and only one y. Now that's an example using a party and people's names and heights, um, but let's do a few examples um, of what you're going to see with uh, some equations and some graphs. Hi, it's me Mr. B. Let's do a, an example of trying to determine if uh, a relation is a function. So I'm given four points here, 1, 7, 2, 5, 3, 0, 4, 9. Um, and remember, each x can have only one y. 
So really what I'm looking for here is, are there any repeating x values? Because if there are, then that means that x has more than one y. All right, so I see a 1, 2, 3, and a 4. I see no repeating x values. I think I'm good. So I think that this is a function. So yes, it is a function. Now, let's say I added a point, um, let's say I added a point 3, 6. All right, so in that case, I would now have a 3 with a y value of 0 and a 3 with a y value of 6. So that means that I could not call that a function. It's a relation, but not a function. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Let's just go back to the normal uh, original problem. Uh, find the domain and range. All right, so domain is the x values, and we're going to talk more about this later, but domain is the x values, range is the y values. All right, so I'm going to draw these. I'm just going to call them fancy squigglies, and the domain is going to be all my x values of all the points. So one, two, three, and four. The range is going to be all my y values, so another set of fancy squigglies. It looks like, and I'm going to put them in order, but it really doesn't matter if I do or not. So that's zero, uh, let's go five, seven, and nine. Um, so one way I can tell a relation is a function is by looking at the x values and see if they have only one y. The other way is called a vertical line test. And that means I'm going to graph these points. So 1 up to 7, so there's 1, 7, uh, 2, 5, will be somewhere in there. So this is my x and my y. And 3, 0, so there's 3 and 0. And 4, 9 would be somewhere up in there. Now the vertical line test means that if I took a vertical line, and I'll represent it here in this with this uh, orange line right here, and if I could slide it left and right, if I hit more than one point at one time, then that means it's not a function. So as I slide my line to the right, there's a point, and it doesn't go through any other points. There's a point, doesn't go through any others. There's one, and there's one. Um, now, since I don't hit any point, any more than one point at a time, that means that that is a function. And we're going to see an example or two here uh, in a second where um, the vertical line test will hit more than one point. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's do an example um, of determining whether a relation is a function. I have five points there. Um, and remember, to be a function, each x can have only one y. Well, it turns out in this case that I have x values of negative 2, but they have different y values, 1 and 6. So that means this is not going to be a function. Um, so that's by looking at the points. Let's do the vertical line test. Remember the vertical line test. If I plot the points, so negative 4 and 5, that's a point somewhere in there. Negative 2, 1, say it's somewhere in there. Negative 2, 6. Um, and negative 1, 6. And 0, 0. All right, so remember my vertical line, um, my vertical line test, I have a, a line, a vertical line, and it can be slide, it can slide either left or right. And you can use your pencil to do this on your paper. Um, if I slide it to the right, um, it looks like if I slide it right over these two points right there, it goes right through those two points. And since the vertical line test goes through two points at a time, that means it violates the vertical line test and means it's not a function. Now, even though I have the same y values on a couple of these points, it doesn't matter. It's the x values that matter. Um, because those two y values are um, that point and that point, And they do not violate the vertical line test. It's the x values that are the important ones. Now, if I want to find the domain and range, so there's my fancy squigglies, and I'm going to write the domain, so negative 4, these are all the x values, negative 2. Now, I don't have to write it twice because it does happen more than one. I see two negative 2s, but I only need to write it once. Uh, negative 1 and 0. And the range is all my y values, so that's 5 
And again, I can write them in order, but it doesn't matter. Five, one, uh, six. Six happens twice, so I don't need to write it twice. Um, and zero. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's determine if the this graph uh, is a function. And I'm going to use the vertical line test to do that. So if I run my vertical line right or left across the graph, does it hit more than one point on the graph? And in this case, it does not. Now, this is what your screen is going to look like when you graph um, a function or graph a graph, uh, an equation on your calculator. And even though it looks like, you know, there's these straight lines all through the graph, it really is not a straight line. Um, they really should be a smooth curve like that. Well, better like that. Um, the reason that the, the graph on your calculator looks that bad is the resolution on the screen is, is really bad. So um, the pixels are big and it makes smooth curves look like straight lines all connected together. But it's really not a straight line. It's really just a smooth curve. So this is, uh, the answer to this question is yes, this is a function because it passes the vertical line test. I do not hit more than one point at a time on the graph. Let's find f of 3 for f of x equals 4x minus 2. Uh, before I actually do the problem, let me just tell you a joke. What does the stamp say to the envelope? Stick with me and I'll take you places. See, I should have been a comedian instead of a teacher. Oh well. I'm going to use something called the function machine here. Um, like any machine in a factory, you put stuff in and at the end you get something out. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. My input is 3. My output is what I get when I plug the 3 in over here for x. So I'm going to find f of 3. All right, I'm going to plug a 3 in for x, so 4 times 3 minus 2. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 2 is 10. So f of 3 equals 10. My x was 3. My y, which f of x really just means my y, my y just ended up being 10. So x of 3 gives me a y of 10. Hey there, it's me, Mr. B. We're going to find g of 1 third for g of x equals 1 half x plus 5. All right, so this is a function machine. I'm going to plug 1 third in for x. So g of 1 third equals. So I'm going to take the x out, and I'm going to put 1 third in a spot. So 1 half times 1 third plus 5. All right, first step here, I have to do the multiplication, so I have to follow PEMDAS, um, order of operations. So I'm going to do 1 half times 1 third. All right, so 1 half times 1 third. And in order to multiply fractions, if you remember, I'm going to multiply the numerators together. So 1 times 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. Then I'm going to multiply the denominators. 2 times 3 is 6. All right, so 1 half times 1 third is 1 sixth. And I'm going to add 5 to that. All right, well, now I have to add 1 sixth plus 5. So in order to add fractions, I need to make sure they're both fractions. So I'm going to just add a 1 on the bottom. So 5 over 1 is 5. All right, so now the next thing I need to do is find my LCD. So the LCD is the least common denominator. It's the smallest thing that 6 and 1 both go into. And that would, of course, be, in this case, 6. So I need to... Um, Multiply each denominator by something to make it look like the LCD. So if the LCD is 6, I don't need to do anything to the first fraction, but on the second fraction, I need a 6 on the bottom, 1 times 6. If I do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top. And now I'm just going to um, put my fractions together all over the LCD. So 1 plus uh, 5 times 6 is 30. So 1 plus 30 is 31. I can't reduce 31 over 6. I could make it into a mixed fraction, but there's really no point in doing that. I'm going to leave it improper. I can't simplify. You always should simplify it, but I can't simplify it, so that's going to be my final answer.